can turn to many other places for source of help and refuge. But we ha don't have many. But to you, we can turn to oh God. For the Bible says, you incline your ears to our cry. You want to hear our ask call, oh God Almighty. We want to thank you for giving us a place of refuge. That we can turn to you in prayer. Even though we are surrounded by some mountain problems. Even though there may be mountains and issues of life all around us, Lord. Yet we can turn to you in prayer. And you hearken to our call. We thank you for we have a friend in thee. We bless you and give you praise in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Put your hands together. Appreciate the name of Jehovah. Appreciate his name. Hallelujah. We can have our seats. May the Lord bless you so much. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus. I welcome each and every one of us to the service today. Thank you for choosing to be here this cold Sunday of first Sunday of the month of August. Is it first? Or, yeah. We thank the Lord for allowing us to be here. We give him praise. Glory be to God. If you are joining us for the first time, either online or even here physically, we want to bless the name of the Lord because of you. Thank you for choosing to be here. We want to trust the Lord ordered your feet to his house for a good reason. My name is Pastor Willie. I serve the Lord here and beyond. And I choose to serve the Lord when I'm born again. I believe the Lord will speak to us today. And he has prepared a message and a word for each one of us. And by the end of the day, we shall receive of him what he has prepared for us. Amen. I've titled today, today's message, A Call to Prayer. A call to prayer. Mwaliko wakuingia katika maombi. A call to prayer. As you may be my witnesses, prayers is not one of the things that come so easily and outrightly to believers. Oftentimes, singing is an easier thing or even listening to the word of God Quite, it doesn't take a lot of effort. But to us who are believers, praying is supposed to be a conduct, a character, a walk. Is our devotion. We give to the Lord time or we devote ourselves and we devote time to pray. There is a lot of liturgy in Christendom when it comes to prayers. What we mezembea sana katika maombi katika ufalme wa Mungu lakini haikuwa hivyo tangu mwanzo when i read acts chapter 2 verse 42 acts 2 verse 42 i understand that the early church did several things four of them mentioned in that verse they devoted themselves to the doctrine of the disciples the, that is the word of god they were hearing the scriptures number 2 they devoted themselves to fellowship, to gathering together, coming together as the early church. Number three, they devoted themselves to the breaking of bread. It's mentioned in the scripture. And lastly, they devoted themselves to prayer. Most of the things we see in church today were bathed by the early church in prayer. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ devoted his entire life to prayer. As often as he would find opportunities, he would go out in a secretive place and pray. And pray. He would devote himself to prayer. At times I look at the church today. There is a lot of talking about the church. There is a, talk, a lot of talk about prayers. But there is very little about actual praying happening. If you go to the bookshelves, there are many books titled at different titles breakthroughs, praying like this, prayers and fasting, prayers of this type of prayers, governmental prayers, long-term prayers, intercessory prayers, prayers of thanksgiving. So many books. But when you ask how many are gathering and praying and you discover not many are praying. Today, the Lord is inviting us to pray. It is not the first time I'm teaching about prayers in this church. I've taught about prayers in a different dimension. I've taught about 
different types of prayers as we read in the New Testament. How Paul writes to us that we ought to offer to God prayers of all kinds. And it's a good thing that in a believer's life, you devote to pray different types of prayers. You don't only pray prayers of worshiping God and exalting our Father. You also take time to give thanks to God. You also take time to repent, prayers of repentance. You also take time to do petitions. Others is intercessory. You take time to intercede on behalf of others. Then there is also prayers which are devoted to spiritual warfare. You pray all kinds of prayers. You pray for all that are in authority and everyone. You pray for yourself, you pray for others. It is good to pray. We have also in some time taken moments to consider and I think I titled this, me this message that day uh, what is a fervent prayer and we looked at some of the things that describe a fervent prayer. We talked about the weight, the devotion in it, how you are, de you are given to it, the posture in prayer, the time we take even in prayer. All these are important. We pray, we say that for that fervent prayer to be answered, the will of God is critical. You have to put an ingredient of the will of God. You just don't pray anything. You pray for the will of God. Today, as we near our elections, as we plan many things about life, one of the things that we ought to put as a critical ingredient in our lives is prayers. But the most unfortunate thing, when people get busy, when people get bored, when people are emotionally upset, the first thing they kick out of your program is prayer. Do I have witnesses in this house? That there are times that you feel like, I don't want to pray. I don't feel like it's time to pray. I found in my personal life, the only thing that keeps me praying and praying continually is a discipline. And that discipline says, irrespective of whether there is rain or sunshine, whether I have won a tender or I've lost, whether someone has encouraged me or insulted me, when I keep a discipline, it has to be like that. I have to pray. Whether I'm feeling like it or not, I have to pray. For me to be successful in prayers and fasting, I have again put a discipline. When I wake up and I feel like that weather is not really encouraging me to pray that day, as long as it's a discipline, I have to pray. When I, when I feel like I'll only be praying when things are good or when my feelings are telling me you can pray, I'll never be a devoted Christian in prayers. I keep on asking, those who are in the northern hemisphere, yani kule maju, pande ya Europe na kuingine, basi na maanisha, kama wanafuata weather, kuna misimu katika maisha wafai kuomba. But the will of God is, as Paul writes to the church at first, the church at the Saronica, pray continually. Hallelujah. Not seasonally. Pray continually. In January, pray. In mid-June, pray. Somewhere in August, pray. When it is morning time, pray. Evening time, pray. Church, we ought to pray. The church was never born as a church that does not pray. There are consequences of not prayers, not praying. And some of them is, we live in darkness. Things are happening, we are caught by surprise. Because nobody sought the face of God to know such things. Nobody actually stood to to prevent some things from happening. So they catch us by surprise. I invite us to pray. Today I've divided today the, the sermon into four portions. And I'll be going through this with the time that is before me and I believe the Lord would guide us. The first portion is why we pray. We answer the question why. I cannot be able to answer every other thing, but I'll be able to highlight one or two things that guides us on why we pray. I read for us the book of Psalm 141, verse 1 and 2. Put it on the screen because I'm, I'm having some jitters. Yes. Psalm verse 1. Psalm 141, verse 1. It's on the screen. We can all read together. Psalm 141, verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, Lord, I cry out to you, make haste to me. Give ear to my voice when I cry out to you. 
Let my prayer be set before you in, as, an, as incense. The lifting up of my hands is the evening sacrifice. I repeat verse 2. Let my prayer be set before you as incense. The lifting up of my hands is the evening sacrifice. This is the author of the book of Psalms saying that when we come before God, we are seeking his attention to the things that we are going through. This, then verse 2 he says that our voice, our prayers as we make them, they go before God as incense. Hold on to that thought. Revelation chapter 8 verse 4 and 5. Revelation chapter 8 verse 4 and 5. I'm answering the first question. Why do we pray? Revelation chapter 8 verse 4 and 5 says, And the smoke of the incense, which, sorry, with the prayers of the saints, ascended before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the, the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth. And there was noise, thundering, lightnings, and an earthquake. In the book of Revelation, again, we read and see that prayers are compared with an incense. In the book of Psalm, we saw that that incense is the evening sacrifice that was being offered and rose before God. I want you to hold on to this thought of prayers being equated with incense. What is incense? If you can take a bit of time and go back to the Old Testament. The, in the Old Testament, God instituted the sacrifices that were to be brought to him. And there were different types of sacrifices. Some were animal offerings. Some were grain offerings. Some were to be given continually. Others were to be given during certain occasions. But this one, the incense, was not like all the others. There was nothing consumable from it. Two things that we find about an incense. And this is what makes prayers be compared with an incense. Incense, number one, is supposed to rise up. If you can go back to the image that I put on the screen. Incense, new fumba. And some of us who work near where the Wahid is, or you work with them, where they have their shops, there is something they burn that smokes. It doesn't burn like fire, but it smokes. As it smokes, the smoke goes up. The same way prayers are supposed to be made, when we make prayers, they should go up to our Father. Therefore, anyone who does not pray, it means there is nothing coming from them going to the Father. Number two, incense is something that smells nice. It's like perfume. It's like perfume. Something smells nice. It attracts. Someone says, there's something nice smelling. I want to get to where it... It's not like the ones we find in the Wahidi shop because that thing to me also irritates. It really irritates me. At times I get to start sniffing. But incense is a good thing. Once it is burnt, once it's consumed by fire or there's some addition of heat, it goes up. But that going up has some nice scent. Now the Bible tells us, the author of the book of Psalm, the book of Revelation, tells us that the prayer of the saints are incense that rises up. Revelation tells us something that we would not have known unless the author of the book of Revelation saw it, that in heaven, the prayers are gathered in like a bowl. And once sufficient of it comes, then the angels take it and they present it to God. Are you seeing that picture? That I'm praying here on earth? I'm seeking the face of God? My prayer goes up before God. As it goes up before him, the angels are gathering it. But that prayer which goes up is not something that is hated. It's not something that is stinking. It's something that God is saying, I want to feel, have that smell again. Bring it. I want to get that smell. Bring it. This is the reason why we pray. We pray because our Father is attentive. 
Glory be to God. We pray because he is saying, I want to get that prayer from that woman. Oh, tell that young man to pray to me. Ask him. Uh, let, let it come. It's something that is smelling nice in the noses of God. If you see someone not praying, I'm telling you the truth. They are presenting nothing to God. And God is asked, I wish they would be told to take an hour and be with me. I wish they would take a moment and pray to me. The author of Psalms says, I want my prayers to come up before you like an evening sacrifice. So that when I'm offering it, it's an incense to the Lord. The Lord says, I want to hear again from you. Oh, my brother, speak again. I want to hear from you. It's something that is appealing. Some people are taught that prayer is a nuisance to God. You're bothering him. You're troubling him. Are you focused on other matters? Why are you troubling the master? As Jesus told those who were preventing bride matmires to come to him, step aside, so would he speak to some people today. That one who is calling me, I want to hear from him more. Hallelujah. I pause this morning or afternoon and ask many of us, to what level has your bowl filled? If you are to look at yourself and measure yourself, have you filled a bowl or two? In this place, I feel there are people who fill plenty of them. The angels are busy taking bowls after bowls to the king of kings, to the lord of lords. Well, there are some other bowls where they are asking, we haven't seen anything here of late. It is two weeks and the bowl is still empty. It's two weeks. They are not even praying for a neighbor. They are not praying even for their country or anything. They are not even praying for themselves. They are so bored. There's nothing to put on the bowl. The angel maybe who was assigned that bowl, keeping on, peeping on it, here is nothing is coming. But he is seeing his fellow angels. Every few moments, they are dashing to the throne of thrones. They are going to present something to the master. Prayer is an incense. And the reason why we pray is because our father wants to hear from us. Call upon me. Many times written in the Bible. Call upon me and I'll answer thee. This is the call of God. There is no moment where he says, no, 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 I'm, I've had enough from you. You are a bother. You give me a break for two weeks. Call upon me and I'll answer you. Today I invite each one of us to know that there is a father in heaven who is eager to hear from you. Glory be to God. Go before him in prayer. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Glory be to God. I answer question number two. How we pray. The first one is why we pray. I cannot exhaust on either of these areas. I'm just highlighting a few verses to give us some direction today. How we pray. Turn together with me the book of Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. From verse 1. I will read a big chunk here. If you can follow me. And you allow me to go slightly slow on this one. Because there are a few things I would want us to learn together. This story in Luke 11. Is also written in the book of Matthew chapter 7. From verse 7. But allow me first of all. To, fo to focus on only in the book of Luke. Because there are a few things I would want us to see. From this text. Luke 11. These are the words of Jesus Christ. And this is his ministry and his conduct when he was here on earth. Verse 1 says the following. Now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place when he seized that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. Allow me to pause there. We are hearing from this verse that Jesus was praying from a certain place. I want to believe the disciples who are not with him praying with him. Why? The second question will not come. Teach us to pray. If they knew already how to pray, they would have already joined him. So they are watching and observing him pray. I would want to say this. Jesus was known as a man, of, man and a God who prayed. Imagine he is God but he prayed. Me, I'm a human being, and I'm not praying. <laughs> Imagine. He is God. He can answer many things. But he prayed. I'm not 
read, but I can refer you to the book of Luke chapter 5, verse 16. You can write it down, but you can read that later. Luke chapter 5, verse 16. It refers us to a scenario where it's mentioned that Jesus oftentimes withdrew from the people and went to a secluded place, retreated to pray. So in this first verse, what we are seeing the disciples observing in him was not a one-day occasion or an event. You know, some of us here, for example, you may not have seen someone dance. So if I come here and you have never seen me dance, and then you see me dance till I sweat, then it's okay for you to pull me aside and say, Hey, leo meshi kwa nini? Urikura nini breakfast? Nini na kuchangamusha hivi? But if it's my practice, there's a chance that you like it. Then you can draw me aside and say, I would want to know what is your secret. Nini nafanyanga uombe hivi? Nini nafanyanga wende mahali prani hivi? Nini nafanya ufanye hivi? So disciples had watched Jesus pray. They would see him. They are doing ministry together. Then he would seclude himself. Anaenda kando. Anaomba. Wao wakienda lunch kwa mfano. Anaingia kwa kichaka mahali frani. Anaomba. Wakitokia anawambia tuendeni safari. So they saw him pray. I'm saying this because if Jesus prayed, then me, a mortal, a human being, with flesh and blood, I ought to pray. I cannot live without prayers. Glory be to God. If my master prayed, then if I'm following his example, then I ought to often pray. Pray continually. Number two, the Bible says, same verse, they asked him, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. Prayers is not something that we are born with. Hallelujah. Nobody acquired devotion in prayers naturally. No. Everyone is taught. And if a church like this, we don't take time to teach people to pray, people will not pray. I'm saying this because of those who come here to read prayers. It's good you hear me. We want to hear you pray. Because as you pray, you are teaching others to pray. We have a new believer in our midst who doesn't know how to pray. They actually are wondering, how can you spend 15 minutes praying for what? To them, they will say, you want to pray for government, nation, food, uh, neighbor, yes. God, remember all those who are mentioned and do them good. Their prayer is over. So they don't know how to pray for 15 minutes for something. They don't know. This is why the disciples would see Jesus praying and they are wondering, this man, he has just done a miracle here or there. He has all the power. Why is he praying again? He is the bridegroom. He has all in him. Why is he praying? But they watched his life. They discovered there's something this man knows we don't know. And they told him, John the Baptist taught his disciples to pray. Aha, uh -huh. so they had observed that the disciples of John the Baptist were also praying. And it was as a result of teaching. Yes, then they prayed. I want to tell you as a church, if I don't stand here oftentimes and teach you to pray, you know what? We'll get prayers to another platform. We'll come when it's prayer time, people are starting out catching up on, with each other. How was your week? Whatever. When they hear the keyboard and other instruments play, it's time for worship. They walk in. And when we are singing, you see tears coming down their cheeks. But they cannot pray. When they are faced by trouble, they will not pray. The next thing they will do is to SMS someone their problems, to call someone and say, you know what? I, I need some money here. I need some help here. There's an emergency. They don't know how when there is anything they need to be taking to God, how they can take it to God. I don't want to bring up a prayerless church. Glory be to God. Trinity House cannot be a prayerless church. Hallelujah. If you are here, even if where you came from is a place they never prayed, here we have to pray. We have to pray. Glory be to God. I wish we can have one hour every Sunday. I wish we can. One good hour. We devote ourselves in prayer. When you anachoka, atazame wengine anaseme, hii kiyo mko nayo, hiyo kiyo, inatoka wapi? Tumuambie, kuna mahali imetoka. Ukimuoja huyu yesu, na upate ufunua ya kwa mawa, yale maobi unao ya omba, ni manukato mazuri kwake. Jameni kila wakati, utatafuta munda, kumpatia manukato. Amen. Glory be to God. I invite you to pray in your family settings. I invite you to pray in your workplaces. 
I invite you to pray for your children. I invite you to pray for your nation. Pray for your business. Pray for your health. Pray for your future. Pray for the future of them that you love. Pray for this church. Pray for your pastor. Pray for everything. In all things, pray. Glory be to God. We cannot be a prayer as church. And if you don't know how to pray, the Bible is telling us you can be taught how to pray. And this is why we have a service like today. Like we have today. Glory be to God. You know what he did, Jesus? He taught them how to pray. And this is the next verse. You can move on to verse 2. He said to them, that is verse 2, when you pray, say, can you allow me to go posting? I'll go quickly through this. When you pray, say, number one, our Father in heaven. This statement is to tell you who you should address your prayers to. Hallelujah. He has taught elsewhere in the book of John that if you ask anything to my Father through me, so all prayers are to the Father. Can I pause there and say, it's such a contradiction to see someone addressing their prayer to Holy Mary. Prayers cannot be addressed to Holy Mary. Even Jesus himself did not say, pray to me. So when you're mukona, hiyo kitu, na muna mbaga na hiyo kitu, na muna mwambia Holy Mary tukubuke, kuna kasoro. Number two, I have witnessed here on earth people who are directing their prayers because they feel that their apostle is so powerful. Oh, the God of so and so. Kama sa ini sikize vijana wawiri watatu wapa wanarika. Wakisema, mungu wa pasta wetu wiri tunakuoba. Sasa, yo vituko ulitoa api. Even if I'm oozing with anointing, even if I'm flowing with power, it is not the God of me. No. You address your Abba Father. Glory be to God. So prayers is to the Father. Number two, hallowed be your name or hallowed be your name or holy or exalted be your name. Our priority in prayer is worship, is exalting our Father. Even if we are squeezed and pushed and we are surrounded by multitudes of problems, he says, address the Father, but number two, exalt his name. Glory be to your name. Blessed are you. Give thanks to his name. Proclaim of his majesty and his power. Why do we have people who in their prayers, the first thing they do, two minutes after getting into their prayer, or a moment after just saying the introduction statement, the next thing, they start saying, God, sina handkerchief. Mungu, kubuka kasimuga kama kame pasuka. Na kubuke nyanya yetu akumahari mahi ututi. On and on, into petitions. And they have not honored the name of the God they are worshiping. Bless the name of the Father. Sing of his faithfulness. Oh, proclaim of his majesty. Talk of the things he has done for you, at least to the far you've come. Say, even the health I have, the breath of life I have, even when you rose me up from the bed this morning, it's because of you. Bless his name. Glory be to God. Number three, thy kingdom come. In short, the agenda of your prayer request should be kingdom minded. It means and we can now come to the will later that your business, whatever you are praying for, must benefit the kingdom of God. Glory be to God. I cannot pray things that are in contradiction to the kingdom of God. Things that are going against that which I want to propagate, to establish. If you are here on Friday, you know the message that we shared on that Friday. So let me not go into the details. Listen to the version that is online and I know it shall be a blessing. Then you move on from the kingdom your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I told you one of the key ingredients in prayer is the will of God. So he is teaching us how to pray. And one of the things he teaches us is his will. When I go to God to pray, I must focus on the will. Oh, James writes to us and says, why do you pray and you don't receive? In response, he says what? Because you ask Amiss. You're not praying in the will of God. How can I right now, when I know we have so many priorities, start asking God, give me a helicopter 
that Nairobians may know it's not only the pol policemen and the politicians who can go to the corners of this republic with a helicopter. Nigeria to Jahubiri. Sasa nikitoka hapa niende Ramu. Nikitoka Ramu niende wapi? Rokicha. Nikitoka Rokicha niende wapi? Kajiado. Nikifanya nini? You know, if I get a helicopter, it's not a bad thing to have a helicopter. I would love to have one. But the business, why? Why? The question is, why? If I'm in the mission of going to missions here, there, or in a day I have four, then I'll do it. At kuna cruzet iko kitare, na kuna ingina kajiado, na zote niza siku moja. So I'm moving from one corner to the other. I want that helicopter. But in a private jet, ya kupak Wilson, au, ata hiyezi to share Wilson, JKIA, na ni jinaranku. I'm praying a miss. I don't know the priorities of the kingdom of God. Glory be to God. And I'm telling you the truth. Even if you are praying for me for such things, shift your prayers. Pray that the will of God be done in my life. Hallelujah. I want to pray for the will of God. I want to pray for the that is the priority. Glory be to God. Don't pray amiss. Someone who is not, okay, let me not go beyond that. Let your will be done as it is being done in heaven. Let it be done here on earth concerning me. Then verse 3 says, give us today or give us day by day our daily bread. Give us day by day our daily bread. Are you marking that? The Bible is saying day. Day. Not give me everything I need in the next three months. Do you know why that verse is there? Can I remind us something that is in the book of Exodus? God told the children of Israel, when you go collecting manna, I'm going to give you manna enough for the day. So that when you eat, you don't keep for tomorrow. If you collect double portion, one for today, one for tomorrow. By the time you wake up in the morning, it is spoiled. What was the message? God is teaching us dependence on him every day. Depend on him every day. Give us day by day our daily bread. Kira siku. Ili usiombele, ukikosa kuoba kesho, hakuna ya kesho juja uja iobea. Iyo unakula umeiba. Hapo watu wengi wazi sema amina. The Bible says we should pray to God to give us day by day, every day. So that if you don't pray for today, then today you are not supposed to eat. Because you have not prayed for it. It is teaching us daily dependence on God. Let me run. Verse 4. And forgive us our sins for we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. This simply points us to repentance. It tells us we are not that good. We are not clean. We are, peop we are people who offend others and we also are offended. And in so doing, we should seek forgiveness both from people, in, both from God and from people. And at the same time, we should also forgive others. We should let go if you read the text in the book of Matthew 7, you will see Jesus even emphasized, for if you, you yourself don't forgive others, how do you expect you to be forgiven? So it's also one of other key ingredients in prayers is repentance. Then he concludes by saying, and do not lead us to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. This is a petition, is a prayer for deliverance is a seeking of the Father that we may be liberated and set free from the many things that may surround us. That there can be dangers, perils, troubles, pains, sicknesses, but God can exempt us from them all. Glory be to God. We are still in the second portion of what we, uh, uh, how we pray. I'll go to verse 5 because I wouldn't want to leave this part unattended. Verse 5 says, And he said to them, which of you shall have a friend and go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine has come to me in, on his journey and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within and say, do not trouble me. 
the door is shut, is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give to you. I say to you, though he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. Glory be to God. In my first point, I said prayers are an incense. It's a good smell. It's a fragrance. Ni manukato mazuri. In this portion we are reading and hearing, Jesus wants to exemplify what prayer is to God by comparing a relationship between a friend and another. So one friend comes and says, it's the middle of the night. It was not planned. Eh, ni ulize, sisi wa Kenya. Hatuna marafiki ambao wana kustuanga sazie hau jajipanga. Na mkwa na mpango, na mkwa mesikiza na chochote. Someone just says, you know what, ni okole na elfu moja. Moja tu, just send me one K, I'll give you back. One, one K. Yes, one patia mfano. And he says, if someone has a friend, and that friend is in need, to show the dire need, the situation, Jesus says, he is coming at midnight, and he is coming at night, midnight telling him, I am in need of urgent food. Naitaji chakula ya haraka. Mana nimepata wageni kwa gafra. Na wageni wanafaa kushurikiwa. Yesu na jibo na sema, hata huyu jamaa kama hata mpatia mikate sababu ye ni rafiki. Si hata mpatia ili ya simsubue. Hallelujah. Ili ya sisidi kumsubua katika usiku wake. So that he does not bother and disturbing in his sleep. He will wake up, grab some five loaves or enough as he wants and give it to him. Then he jumps back to bed. Jesus says, our God who sticks closer than a brother our God, who we can call a friend, can do much, much more than that person who is willing just to give for the sake of not disturbing his peace. What is Jesus pointing at? Persistence. Hallelujah. Jana ndikuwa na mkutano na a lady pastor and some friends who are coming from up country. And we spoke a bit about prayers. And I gave them a, an illustration. As who are mothers or fathers in this house, or even you as a son or a daughter of someone, you know this very experience. Konfano, mom, you go kitchen. Hakuna shukuri zake, naosha sufuria, vitu zingine anafanya hapo. Alafu mtoto itane kutoka ngamboire ingine, sema, mom, mom, kuja unisaidie. Mom hata acha sufuria zake, kwaza hata maliza, alafu nasema, wacha ninakuja. And then continue on. But imagine, if the same same boy or girl who is seeking for help instead of kuitana kiwa ngambo hii mom, mom, kuja unisaidia instead of that the girl shouts mom what will happen the mother will throw the sufuria wherever it goes and jump to the kitchen to, to wherever that boy or girl is to address the matter true or not true or not I want to show you the intensity and the difference in prayers this man shows the urgency. It's at midnight and I have visitors. In short, you must wake up and help me. Yet there are people who go to God in prayers and suggest to God, Mungu kwetu nyumbani, kuko na shida. Naangalia nga niko, amefirisika. Naona my elder sister, ata haja yolewa. Dugu yangu nae, alifutu wa kazi juzi. Mungu tunaoba utukubuke, utusaidie. Utusaidie. Badrisha hii hali, utusaidie. Yet there's someone else who goes to a private or secret place. They put their head between their knees as Elijah did and tell God, if you don't come, we are in danger. We are doomed. God, you use the words of the book of Psalms. David said, God, come quickly. If you don't come, my enemies will swallow me. This is the difference. And this is what Jesus is teaching us. That when you pray, you can pray suggestively, indicating to God you have two or three alternatives and he is just one of them. In case he doesn't come, it's okay, you'll go to option two. <laughs> People pray like that. Mungu tu, ni kubuke tu. Lakini ukiona kabisa ni kama ukuji, uniabie, 
Siwezi kuwa na nimeshindwa and ko anaweza ni sort anaweza ni kuamua na hiyo 1500 anaweza ni kuamua That's how we pray But Jesus is saying pray like this friend who approaches his friend at the middle of the night when kausingizi kameshika But he knows this friend of his ako na chapo Unaweza omba mtu ambaye unaweza omba mtu mikate na hana No unajua ako nayo So we know our God has everything we need He has it good health peace long life he has everything in him so he comes at the middle of the night and tell me i need something and that which i have you what i need you have it and to show the urgency hamwambi sio mimi nataka kama mimi nataka nitakuja kesho asubuhi ukishaamka vizuri umenawa uko sawa but i have friends who have visited like an emergency i need it now so you must come and sort me glory be to god Hallelujah. I'm talking to people who have been praying for issues in their families, issues in their personal lives. And you are praying as though you just wanted to come and go. How a mama ndiwaambia, siku moja mimi nilivuta kiti ya bao, inaitwa stool ya bao, nikakalia hivi. Nikasema usingizi wewe na mimi. Sitaki coach, nikiketi pale nitasinzia. Nikaketi hapo mpaka saa 11 asubuhi. Shida yangu ilikwisha. I deal with my personal issues. But there are people who pray Yaani umeshida the whole day busy hujaomba alafu maombi ya jioni hata baada ya kuchukua 30 minutes unaomba ukiwa umefunika blanket mpaka hapa blanket umekanyanga pale chini unasema kuna baridi hii nitaombea nikiwa hapa Mungu wangu oh tazama vile ulivyo mzuri hallelujah oh unakumbuka ulikuwa unaomba Bwana kumbuka hali zetu zote kausigiza kana kuchukua Asubuhi ndio naamka kusema amen. Nawe utazidi kungangana na hali zako. When I read the Bible, I see people who said I will not give sleep to my eyes. Kuna mahali unakataa usingizi. Unasema hii hali hapana. We are at a junction in Kenya and I'm seeing so many people eating and drinking, enjoying and having fun just as though things are usual. We, 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 oh, we wake up, we go home, we do business. Akiobea child anasema na Mungu kubuke Kenya, utupatie kiongozi, utupage tu wewe, mambo ikue sawa na nazidi. In 2007 with a few of my brothers, God quickened us to pray. I see Mrs. Jotham here. We were with her in the prayer center in Ruiru. We had no idea that there would be post election violence. We, we said we are doing a chain of three days, three days, three days mpaka mwisho wa mwaka. Tukaanza. Na Christmas ili tupata tu huko. Tunaenda siku tatu. Wengine wanakuja one day before siku ya tatu ishe, wanachukulia. Na unaenda unapumzika siku mbili. Unarudi. Ilikuwa hivyo. And we never knew. Tukiwa huko ndani 27th. Jo tunasikia sijui lift vile kumetokea nini. Ah mwenye alikuwa anatuongoza akasema sasa it's time to intensify. It's time to pray. Unatoka siku mbili nilikuwa nakimbia na naenda pale dhika naambiwa kumechacha go back go back she is here she is my witness and I have maybe a few others who know we never knew anything we were not even praying for elections we said this season we are not going to eat and feast christmas kama wengine tutaoba and we prayed as we were praying tukasikia mambo we said now as we were planning to conclude on the 7th there is no way hatuwezi kumalizia siku saba nikusafiri tuendele I'm talking to some people here who have issues constraining them from all corners to mambo tumekusukuma lakini ile maombi ni ile ya chai unajua maombi ya chai Mungu tunaomba ubariki chai na kile tutakayo tafuna na tunaomba Bwana kama vile umetupa za roho utupe Amen na inakuwa hivyo na siku yake inakuwa hivyo hakuna maombi gine the whole day The father is waiting for incense but he gets none. Angels are busy waiting for the bowl to be full. There's none. We cannot be that church. Hallelujah. And the early church gave itself into prayers. Even when they would know there is a mission ahead. Before they said we plan and koso and so ni utaenda na wewe utatua. Ah ah. They devoted themselves to prayers and then the Holy Spirit would say pick for me Paul and Barnabas. Watume kwa nini wamesikia kwa maombi wakiomba Mungu amewaambia 
Chagulian Furani, I ended up in mission. I've heard in another place people saying and criticizing the church, and it is true. The decisions in, in church have shifted from prayer room to boardroom. We want to make very serious decisions, but we don't take time to pray about them. We devote ourselves to sit in boardrooms and make decisions. The church was born in the upper room. We will have to go back where we were born. Glory be to God. Verse 9, let me read the remaining portion quickly and we move on to the next one. Verse 9 says, so I say to you, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for fish, for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. Are you seeing in those verses we are reading the character of God? Are you seeing it? Katika Maombi, this is the key thing. Occupy your mind with the character of God. Not the impossibilities and the difficulties and the issues we are, that are surrounding us. No. Jesus says he is comparing God with an earthly father. The same way I come to my house and I'm so eager Kusikia venye watoto wangu watanikaribisha kwa nyumba na watasema nini na wataniomba nini the same way i'm eager to hear from my sons and daughter kuna kakitu ni promise my daughter last sunday hii wiki yote kila siku nikiingia kwa nyumba the first question she was asking me daddy now do you have a free time because that thing just required some free time we create some accounts and we do some things and that was it daddy and now 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 do you have some free time and now are you relaxed? Now are you okay? Can we get some time and do this? Every day. Until Friday said yes. Now we have to do it. This is an other father. Who is able to listen to her daughter. To his daughter. How much more about our heavenly father. Who is not a man like me. How much eager he is to hear from us. Number two. When he hears us we give Good gift. The Bible calls them good gift. Buying your son a bicycle is a good gift. Taking them out is a good thing. Or taking them to swim is a good thing. How much more about your heavenly father who is saying, can my son ask me for fish? I give them a snake. Can they come asking for a boiro? I give them a scorpion. No way. Then our father is more than eager to give us good things. Glory be to God. The Bible says, therefore, ask. Ask. James says, you do not have because you don't ask. Therefore, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek. Go seeking. There are many places we can read in the Bible about seeking the face of God and you will fight. Then knock. That knocking was even mentioned this morning. Someone knocked. Someone had seen knocking at the door of their hearts. That's in the book of Genesis, chapter 4. Knock. Sin is knocking. Revelation tells us God is knocking. Glory be to God. So even us, we are promised that God, if we knock at doors, he'll cause those doors to be opened. So today I invite us to do those three things. Ask, seek, and go and knock. Glory be to God. In your personal life, do those three things. This summarizes the second question on how we pray. In prayers, we ask. In prayers, we seek. Seek the face of God. Plead with him. In prayers, we knock. We tell God, I'm going for an interview. That's a door I'm knocking. Oh, I'm thinking of this, this business idea. Is this your plan? I'm knocking that door. I'm thinking of traveling here. I'm knocking that door. If it is your plan, let it be done. If a young man is in our midst, he's saying, God, I'm also knocking at the door of someone's heart. If it is your will, let that heart be opened. Hallelujah. Say a better amen. 
Glory be to God. If you've not been praying, this is a week to do so. We will pray. Glory be to God. The last question I want to answer and close is what to pray for. He do not do Kabisa, kabisa. We don't need a lot of effort, but praying, what we pray for, there can be a million things. What do we pray for? Amen. I want to give only two. And these are the ones which concerns us most in this season. There can be thousands here. You can pray as much as you can for many things. But I want to give us two. The first one is the spreading or the furtherance of the gospel. Pray for the spreading or the furtherance of the gospel. The birthing of new believers. The church, the early church in Acts chapter 4, I'm not asking us to go there for now. When they were threatened, Peter and John, held by the son Henry, they were told you must stop doing what you are doing. We forbid you from doing this. What was the result? What did they do? The Bible says they gathered together with the church. And they started to pray, asking God, why do men scheme evil and wicked things against the Almighty? In futility, why are they thinking that they can stop your gospel from progressing? Let me not go to the details. The conclusion of that portion, the Bible says, the place they were in was shaken. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. They were empowered and they continue preaching the gospel in boldness. Glory be to God. If the church does not pray, hear me, O church, and them that are watching online, if we don't pray, I tell you, spreading of the gospel will be stopped. I have places in this world where the spreading of the gospel has been stopped. People cannot preach, they cannot stand and share their faith with others. And if you don't pray in this country, one day we'll be in a country where it will be illegal for you to tell someone to come to your faith to accept Christ Jesus to be their Lord and Savior. I'm bringing this awareness because it has happened in some nations where it is illegal to preach the gospel. Let me give you two verses, uh, two uh, sets of scriptures, and we, we run through this. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. If you can put this in NIV version. Ephesians 6 from verse 18. Ephesians 6 from verse 18. The Bible says, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Verse 19 is my emphasis. Pray also for me, that wherever I speak words, may be given me so that I will fiercely, sorry, fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Second one is Second Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 1 and 2. Use the New King James on this one. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 1 and 2. Paul says, finally brethren, pray for us. That the word of the Lord may run swiftly to be glorified just as it is, is with you. And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men for not all have faith. Let me summarize those two texts. Paul is pointing us to something. That those who start to preach the gospel are opposed. They are resisted. They are powers and principalities that do not agree with the spreading of the gospel. And in your prayers, together with praying for Ugali and praying for the new president, brethren, pray for the spreading of the gospel. Hallelujah. I keep on saying this. Do you know, brethren, we can ignore the aspect of prayer and prayer for others to come to faith until one day when your daughter or son brings you your son-in-law to be or your brother-in-law, your daughter-in-law to be. They bring you a thug. And they're telling you, Daddy, this is the one I've chosen. Ah, he's the love of my life. He's, you're telling, what, 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 what? Maybe I am, Mom, who's Jali? Ah, tatusha amua tusha kapa moja. Wewe ni ukubali, usikubali, sisi tusha ondoka. But all along, you were only concerned about the faith in your family and the marriage, sorry, the, 
the exaltation of God or the family altar. You're only concerned about your domestic. But God is inviting us to pray for the salvation of others. When your children go to school, they go to school with others who on Sunday spent all their life watching horror movies, watching the zombies. But they are there in class. When your daughter is concentrating, the guy who has been watching all these horror movies is seated next to your daughter, teaching them the things of the world. This is why as a church, we must pray for the salvation of the world. Glory be to God. We are obligated to pray and preach the gospel. For the success of that gospel, Paul is saying, pray for me. So that if when I'm preaching, I'm tempted to be fearful. Pray that I will preach the word of God. Even though I am in chains, I will preach fearlessly. Oh, as we come to the month of August, the end of this month, we'll be preaching in a crusade here, in mission work. We pray that every missioner will be preaching fearlessly. Hallelujah. So, unapata mtu wakona pesa kuliko wewe, unasema, hui, 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 nikimuambie maboya yesu, hata nitukana tu. Awa, niambie, we, ni, nini unataka, sini pesa, unahubiri hivi, pata pesa, eh. shika ilifu moja na uodoke. Pray that the gospel will not be hindered. Amen. Pray that we'll also be rescued from men who are wicked. A church like this has enemies. Some of you may think it's a surprise. We have enemies. There are people who are working day and night to have us depart from this place. Lakini wale wanafaa kuomba, wanarana 24-7. Wale wanafaa kusimama, hizi ngome za giza zisifauru, washa singizia. I was really encouraged to see brethren coming here every Friday to pray. But at some point, a good number of them felt, hey, ibaridi mezid, tutarezio muko diseba, au pengine sikuingine. Brethren, I encourage you to continue praying. Hallelujah. Come seek the face of God here. You don't know the powers of darkness we are resisting. As Moses was praying on the mountain, if his hands would go down, the armies downhill will be defeated. The enemy of the camp of God will continue succeeding and gaining territory. I invite us today. Pray for the things that God has put before us. Amen. Hallelujah. We are having a mission coming. I pray that each one of you will take today a moment and pray about it. If you don't have a prayer agenda, let me give you several. Jesus says, pray to the Lord of the harvest that there may be more laborers. So, agenda number one, pray for more missioners and missioners who are emboldened by God to preach the gospel. Amen. Pray for provisions. We need a lot of provisions. People can spend billions, like in this campaign, billions spent in campaign, but very few people are willing to spend even 5,000 in mission work. Pray for the resources. Glory be to God. Pray for favor with this environment. That as we go to preach the gospel, the word will be received. People will accept the gospel. Pray that we'll get places where we can preach from. That we'll not get resistance. Pray that even as we go to preach, we'll be able to subdue the powers of evil and darkness reigning in Roizambu. Hallelujah. Do I have a few who can at least agree with me and we have now recruited you officially. We pray for the spreading of the gospel. If we don't, Kenya one day will be where Europe is. Too much advancement in technology, all infrastructures are in place, education is free, medical is free, everything is free. But Christianity is down to 2 or 3%. And those who are going to church, and those who are saying, I'm a virgin, those who are saying, I'm living holy, they are ridiculed. On Sunday, it becomes the day of going to the stadium and watching games, not going to worship. Church halls like this are lent out for discourse and bought out by mosques. Why? The church means nothing anymore in Europe. If we don't pray one day, I'm telling you, if we don't pray and we don't bath Christianity through prayers, it will happen. I'm not a prophet of doom, but I tell you, we are on the blink of it. I'll give you the second we close. The second reason why we pray. 
Read Psalm 122. If you can put Psalm 1 to 2, verse 6 and 9. Psalm 1 to 2. Verse 6 through to 9. The second one is praying for the peace of our dwellings. Pray for the peace of your dwelling. Your neighborhood is your responsibility. Your country, your city, your land is your responsibility. Pray for that place. Psalm 1 to 2 verse 6 and 9 says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Let's move on. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. Glory be to God. That psalm says, you pray for the city of Jerusalem. Many take it literally that we pray for Israel. I have no problem. And let's continue praying for Israel and praying for the city of Jerusalem. But beyond that, those who are being addressed here, they were basically being told, pray for your home place. Pray for your county. Pray for your city. Like here, honestly speaking, how can you be living in Nairobi and you're not, you're not praying for the next governor of Nairobi? And you know he can tweak and twist things and things become hard for you. You're operating a business today. Then they come to power next week and they give new licenses which you cannot afford and you close down. And you had powers to control that in a prayer today. I invite us to pray. Let me read the next one so that we can summarize the two of them together and close. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 5 and 7. 5 through 7. Jeremiah 29 verse 5 through 7. Bible says, build house and dwell in them. This is an address to the captives of Jerusalem that time. Build houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat their fruit. Take wives and beget sons and daughters. And take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands so that they may, be, they may bear sons and daughters. That they may be increased there and not diminish. Verse 7, my emphasis. And seek the peace of that city where I have caused you to be carried away captives. And pray to the Lord for it. For in its peace you shall have or you will have peace. Are you seeing that text? Jeremiah writing and prophesying to the children of Israel about things and events which are to come in future that they will be taken away to captivity in Babylon. But when they go there as captives, Jeremiah gives them advices, some of them being, relax when you are there. You go get a wife. You go get married. Together with all that advice, he adds, pray for the peace of that city you will be dwelling. Pray for that place of your dwelling. Why? If that place will be finding peace, then you'll also be at peace. If there is war and battle in that place, you'll also be at war. If there is hunger and famine in that place, you'll also be in famine. If there is sicknesses and diseases ravaging people, it will not spare you because you are a believer. Pray. Why? For in its peace, you'll also fight peace. Narobi kifanikiwa wa Kristo wanafanikiwa. Kenya ikiwa na amani wa Kristo wote walio Kenya wanapata amani. Inchi yetu inchi yetu kikosa mikusuka suko ni sisi tutakao faidika. Therefore, pray for the peace of that city. I invite us to pray for Kenya. Amen. I've seen several nations and I know you are my witnesses who during the elections go, things go really south. Tulikuwa hapo 2007. Our neighbors, Zamb our friends in Zambia, our northern friends, Sudan, is during a period like this, they went south and they have never recovered. You are my witnesses. In Sudan, even the army general who is in power now, he was saying, we tried a transition government. I'm not talking of South Sudan. I'm talking of North Sudan or the main Sudan. During a period like this, they thought they are bringing other leaders. That leaders was taken by others. On and on. Chaos. To date, they have never recovered. I'm speaking to them that are hearing me today. 
just one day before the elections. Someone is saying, you should have said this pastor for a whole one year before so that we can be praying on our own. I believe you are a Kenyan. And this is why I believe you should be praying and you have been praying. Let's pray for this nation. Hallelujah. Can I read for us? Pro oh, you can put it on the screen. Proverbs 11, 11. Please put it on the screen. Proverbs 11, 11. I'll tell you why. I quoted this verse when you were praying here on Tuesday. Let me, let's read together. The Bible says, By the blessings of the upright, the city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the... How is the city overthrown? This. Not weapons. This. The tongue is a fire. It can consume a forest. The Bible says, By the mouth of the wicked... When the wicked stand in those podiums and continue speaking wickedness, wickedness, a city can be brought down. But what will bring it to a place of blessing? By the blessings of the upright, the city is exalted. In short, you and me can stand right here and bless Nairobi, and bless Thika, and bless Kisumu, and bless Nakuru, and that city will be blessed. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Always remember this verse. Very easy to remember. Proverbs 11, 11. That my mouth can bless Nairobi and Nairobi remain blessed. But when these people are standing in podiums and speaking bile, wickedness, perversion, they can cause our nation to go under. Today I invite us to make those two prayers. Those two. Pray for the mission and pray for the country. Glory be to God. Will we pray? Hallelujah. I'm done, we can close our Bibles and our books and our notebooks and everything. I want us to pray. Ukiwa tu umeket tutaomba. Omba, omba, utafute uso wabwana, aonaye kwa siri, atakujibu kwa wazi, omba, 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 utafute uso wabwana, aunaye kwa siri, ata kujibu kwa, oh, gedise mane, yesu aliomba, mapa mapenzi yako ya timizwe, mungu kwa ajili yako na yangu, Kamba bana kashida Omba, omba Omba Utafute uso wabwana Aonaye kwa siri Ata kujibu kwa wazi Sisi tuombe Omba, omba Utafute uso wabwana Aunaye kwa siri Ata kujibu kwa wazi Oba usije uka ingia Majali buni eduvu Usimame mka milifu Bele ya buwana daima Omba, omba Utafute uso wabwana Aunaye kwa siri Ata kujibu kwa wazi Sisi tuobe Omba, omba Utafute uso 